But there was a movement to return to liberty and freedom back in the early uh, 1900s. And in 1916, which is you know, right at the height of, the, of World War I, uh, they brought out three new coins. What they're after is freedom of thought. Not your freedom of speech, not your freedom of expression, but freedom of thought. All right, we're here with Tim, and we <laughs> and we're looking at some silver he has. Man, you, these are rounds, right? Yeah. Rounds. You got four tubes of rounds. You got some Britannia's. Very pretty. One of the most gorgeous coins that a government mints, as far as I'm concerned, for bullion. You got my tube of maples that I'm asking for. Yeah, only uh -huh. one tube for some reason. What? I, <laughs> you're right. Maybe I should be buying more. You got more in there, right? Oh, I actually have a present for you. Oh, you have a present for me? I do. Oh, oh okay. Hold on, everyone. Very okay. old monster box. Oh, an empty mo Oh, I thought it was going to be full. Well, they <laughs> didn't hide some gold in there. No such luck. Hey, I appreciate this, though. This this will give me uh, more impetus to, to finish my maple monster box. So thank you, Tim. That's good. Put that over here. But I got a question for you. We were talking before I started recording, and I asked you what you think were the top threats to our nation. Well, right now it's the United States Congress. That's that's probably the the biggest threat to our security. I don't think we can trust anybody. Um, I don't understand why Republicans aren't holding their ground in some of the stuff that's uh, before Congress. Um, it's hard to, hard to order them, but I would say immigration and, and all kinds of immigration, what's going on on the southern border, plus the 100,000 Taliban, or at least the so-called refugees, the Taliban uh, decide to let get on a plane, which concerns me. Um, that's definitely a threat. And what's going on our southern border is definitely a threat. Especially Texas. Yeah, Texas. We were talking for earlier about Texas. Texas should be talking about secession right now. You know, after they close the border, build a wall and put some razor wire up. <laughs> wall Street and the Federal Reserve, the cartel, the financial cartel that runs this thing, this country. Uh, that's that definitely a threat. That's a huge monetary threat. It is. It is. A, it's a very well. Yeah, Jerome Powell used to caution Congress and stop spending money because when they got to 27 trillion, he said that's not payable anymore. Uh, now we just spend another 1.44 trillion dollars buying mortgage-backed securities. But didn't we do that in like 2008? Uh, wasn't that like the wrong thing to do back then? So you see the threat to our dollar as a threat to our way of life. I do. I definitely do. And the, you know, the overriding thing that, you know, I said it was the big black cloud that surrounds everything is China. And I wonder in uh, General Milley when he was um, assuring them that we wouldn't attack them. Um, uh, does that include when they overrun Taiwan that we won't attack them mm -hmm. or do anything in response to their overrunning Taiwan? Uh, I mean, those those are serious considerations. We we have pulled back our Pacific fleet. Uh, we don't have much of a presence in the Taiwan area. Um, they have a huge military presence, and um, they are letting North Korea test ICBMs. Um, they're not our friends, man. <laughs> Even though the president might think they're our friends, man. They're not our friends. <laughs> All right, so we got Congress, we've got immigration, and you wrap in the the Taliban and, and yeah. that, and China, and uh, you mentioned the Federal Reserve and Wall Street, which you don't distinguish much between no, those, I do think you? It's, I Why? think it's a cartel. I honestly do. I think well, you know, these the the big firms own a piece of the Fed. We don't know who else does, but. The big firms all own a piece. They all have shares of the Fed. Um, but I don't see the regulatory agencies doing much. Uh, I'm a little concerned that um, 
in the commodities trading area, there seem to be regulations that are not being followed, and there doesn't seem to be any um, repercussions. Yeah, you and I were just chatting about the COMEX and who was actually making sure that they actually have all have. that physical silver to back up everything. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know if anybody is keeping an eye on that. And, and that's, that's very concerning because, um, you know, back in 1987, we had a stock market crash and um, it was all individual investors were getting spooked. Okay. And they all, you know, everybody decided at the same time to sell out of the market before you lost everything. And, um, you know, the people who uh, stayed in the market lost a lot. The difference between that and the 1929 crash, uh, those companies never came back. I mean, they went to zero. And in, in 1987, if you sold out, you could buy the same stocks back at a lower price. And then, you know, most of us that I know did that at that time. But the individual investor means nothing today. Absolutely nothing. We have no sway. And, you know, the, uh, the Reddit crowd might get a few people together to make something move, but um, it's not a, a, a lasting impact. And I, that, that also concerns me because the markets um, survive and thrive if they, are, if they cater to the individual investor. And, you know, that's, that's where the individual investor has his or her wealth. And, um, you know, it's could be 29 all over again, except it at the whims of the hedge funds, because when they decide to sell out, that's when the big collapse comes. Well, we're seeing some uh, tremors right now on the market. Gold and silver got rocked not too, too long ago. <laughs> well, that's because the, the, the dynamic has changed. You see, um, it didn't it used to be this way, but good news is bad for the metals and bad news is bad for the metals, <laughs> which means the metals are probably being manipulated. Now, gold, not so much because, yeah. you know, when gold yeah. dips below 1800, then there's a buying by nations mm. who buy gold. You know, there are five that we know about that, you know, you know, step back in the water, but silver, uh, silver doesn't have that luxury. Yeah. Silver is, um, and there's still a fairly large shortage of silver. You know, these, these, there's still a lot of mints that, like the Canadian mint, you know, we used to get bars, beautiful bars from the Canadian mint. They're still making the hundreds. We're not seeing any tens. And, um, you know, they, I, I have to give all the credit to the Canadian mint. They, you know, as soon as they came out of their vacation, they, they started producing lots of gold and lots of silver bars. but. Not the fractionals, but um, you know they recovered pretty quickly, and um, you know I have to assume that the U.S. Mint is much much larger and has um, you know, many more elements they have to contend with, but they're still not meeting demand with anything. So what's another threat to our nation? Uh, let's see, progressives getting involved in the military. Mm, our military. That's wow. pretty bad. Yeah. And, um, I mean, soldiers should be soldiers. Soldiers shouldn't be um, social workers. Mm. And um, I don't think even Millie can describe what white rage is. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a nebulous term. It has nothing to do with soldiering. Mm. I mean, they, they need to concentrate on training soldiers to be soldiers. And um, and uh, you know training them to function as a group, as a unit, as they do now. I mean that that training is very clear in the military. They all depend on each other, and it doesn't matter their color, it doesn't matter about their background and their religion. They all depend on each other, and I I'm really concerned that um, with some of these new ideologies, um, they're going to start to separate people in the military as uh, the oppressed and oppressors. Um, that All that does is lead to segregation. I mean, if you, there are college classes that are teaching this, and um, you, you look at the students and you say, oh, well, you're, you're an oppressor, and you're the oppressed, you know, you're a victim. What do those students do when they walk out of class? 
Well, the oppressors hang with the oppressors, mm -hmm. and the oppressed hang with the oppressed. Because then now they have something in common that they never knew they had. Destroys unity. It does destroy unity. And we are, as a nation, based on e pluribus unum. Out of the many, one. We're losing that. That's the way it was when I was growing up. Well, I, I appreciate those risks. It's kind of one of the reasons, the major reason why I'm stacking this stuff because I think this will help uh, help protect us. It's not going to insulate us from what's coming, I'm afraid. No, it does give you a little more flexibility and where to put your money. And right. you know, if, they, if Congress comes up with one of these uh, harebrained schemes to uh, um, have the banks report every deposit or mm. uh, every withdrawal of around $600 or more uh, to the IRS, um, that will create chaos because $600 is nothing. I just got a notice from PayPal telling me that all goods and services are now needing to be reported over 600. And so I need to, I know it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. That's why we're going to have central bank digital currencies. There won't be any worry whatsoever about filing or reporting. They'll, 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 they'll do your taxes for you. <laughs> so we were just a little side note at the very end there. You were talking about the individuals threat. Yeah, well, you know, freedom of expression and freedom of speech have been, you know, squashed everywhere, especially on social media. Hmm. Uh, you have, you know, and the and the, the print media as well, television media. Uh, freedom of speech is being squashed, and people are just accepting it. Right. Mostly, it's you know, it's the left trying to silence the right. right. Okay. So, what do conservatives do? They say, well, you know, those people are all leftists, so we'll just ignore them. What they're after is freedom of thought, not your freedom of speech, not your freedom of expression, but freedom of thought. After the, well, during the First World War, there was a, um, it was a crisis in this country because um, Teddy Roosevelt was pretty much responsible for the progressive movement, but it was for progress. That's why they call themselves progressives. But the communists who were being shunned decided to become progressives. So they infiltrated the progressive party, I think it was called the Bull, Bull Moose Party or something like that. Um, so communists, socialists, uh, leftists, you know, refugees from, they were trying to spread Marxism out of the Soviet Union, or out of Russia, um, they all became progressives. Okay? Uh, so there was, a, there was a movement to return to liberty and freedom back in the early uh, 1900s. And in 1916, which is you know right at the height of the of World War One, uh, they brought out three new coins: uh, the Mercury dime, which is not a Mercury dime, uh, the Standing Liberty quarter, and the Walking Liberty half dollar. If you look at the Walking Liberty half dollar, um, it has a sun, which is you know a new dawn is coming in in Europe, and that's. Um, liberty is facing to the east and that sun is rising in the east okay um, the standing liberty quarter was to stand on all the liberties that are guaranteed to the people in the constitution the mercury dime only got its name because the I think it was the FTD flora system came out about the time the mercury dime was very popular and mercury had the wings on its hat um, the Mercury Dime, actually, it's called Wing of Liberty, mm -hmm. has the, the wings that signify freedom of thought on her liberty cap. Okay, so the the Mercury Dime should be called a Wing of Liberty Dime. The Standing Liberty Quarter is it, that we are standing for liberty in this country, mm -hmm. uh, guaranteed by the Constitution. And the Walking Liberty was that we're going to help, you know, the cure these this revolution that was going on in Europe and um, you know it was, World War One was in, involved everybody um, with the new dawn in Europe wow that's beautiful well it's I mean beautiful yeah you know, they they changed to put you know presidents and mm -hmm. figures like um, you know founders like uh, uh, Franklin on the coins I think a little prematurely those those coins were not only beautiful but they had meaning. Okay. All right, man, I gotta, I gotta grab this. And thanks again for that monster box. Boy, that's quite the encounter, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime.